So in this short video, we're going to have a look at how we can use the law of conservation of momentum to explain a practical situation. So the first thing is to remind ourselves of what the law of conservation of momentum is. The law of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum, and the total is really important, before and after a collision or explosion is the same, provided no external forces act on the system. So, so this is the structure that I'm going to use to write my explanation of conservation uh, using the conservation of momentum. And we'll work through it along like this. And to see how that works, we're going to have a little example. So, my example is a skateboarder jumps forward off their skateboard. Why does the skateboard move backwards? So let's see if we can illustrate that. <clears throat> so the skateboard jumps forwards and the board moves backwards. OK, so we've got to try and explain that. So let's have a look at the first thing in our structure. The first thing is to decide what the two things that we need to consider, the two objects or the two things, and what is the event. So in this case, fairly obviously, the two things that we need to consider are the skateboarder and the skateboard and the event that we need to consider is the border jumping off. So let's have a look and see what the next thing that we have to look at is what is the speed of the first object and hence its momentum and what's the speed of the second object and hence its momentum, both of those before the event happens. So in this case, that's quite easy. Bef <clears throat> let's just put them back to how they should be at the start. So before the skateboarder jumps off, both the skateboard and the skateboarder are stationary, which means they have no speed, which means both the skateboard and the skateboarder have zero momentum. So let's see what the next step was. We need to consider beforehand what is the total momentum. Well, that's pretty straightforward because zero adds zero is zero. So the total momentum before the skateboarder jumped off must be zero. So now we need to apply the law of conservation of momentum to decide what must the total momentum afterwards be. Well, the law of conservation of momentum says the total momentum before and the total momentum after must be the same. So therefore, if it was zero before, then the total momentum afterwards must also be zero. So now we get to the interesting bit, which is to consider what must the individual momentums be in order to satisfy this conservation of momentum. So let's go back to my not very well drawn picture. So we were told that the skateboarder jumps forwards, and that means they must have some positive momentum um, in that direction. And therefore, if the total momentum is going to still be zero, the um, skateboard must move in the opposite direction so that it has a negative momentum of equal size so that when you add the positive momentum of the skateboarder to the negative momentum of the skateboard it still adds up to zero and so that explains why the skateboarder would go backwards so let's summarize then what our complete explanation would look like so, we need to consider the skateboard and the skateboarder and think about what happens before the skateboarder jumps off and what happens after the skateboarder jumps off. So, before the skateboarder jumps, the skateboard is stationary and has no momentum. And before the skateboarder jumps, the skateboarder is stationary and hence has no momentum. Therefore, before they jump, the total momentum must also be zero. But the law of conservation of momentum says that afterwards the total momentum must be the same as it was before. Therefore, the total momentum must still be zero after they jump. But as the skateboarder has jumped forwards and would have a momentum in the forwards direction, in order for the total momentum to be zero, the skateboard must go with a equal momentum in the opposite direction, or a negative momentum, so that the total momentum is still zero, and therefore the skateboard moves backwards. So hopefully you could apply this structure 
to explain other things, such as what happens in a collision between two vehicles or how rockets work um, using the same structure.